Hi, I'm Kate. And I'm Bill. And this is our handmade home. On Long Island, New York. My family goes back about six generations here. And this guy's from the Midwest and got dragged here to be with me. <laughs> and all 87 of her family members. Yeah. <laughs> we balance each other quite well in our strengths. You know, I'm, I'm the one who's sitting there looking up kind of standard distances between countertops and islands and making sure everything's like kind of all balanced and where it's supposed to be. And she's the one who, you know, she's like, I have to have this countertop. This is the countertop I have to have, picking out basically and designing all of the kind of aesthetic of the, yeah, of the I'm, place. I'm really very unreasonable and he's very reasonable. <laughs> <laughs> That's what makes us work. I started selling vintage after I started hoarding way too much vintage, and this guy was like, you gotta get some of this crap out of here. Um, so I started selling online through Etsy, and then I started my own website, and that's what I sell through now. It's kpiercevintage.com. And basically, I go to thrift stores, estate sales, and I pick up everything I like, and I keep what I really like, and I sell what just doesn't work in our house. We bought our house almost three years ago, and we loved the old charm of it. It was built in 1910, but it was an absolute disaster. Every little inch needed love. I don't even think it had been painted in 30 years. So we love that about it too, though. We're project people. He does all the building, I do the designing, and it's just been a labor of love. It had great bones. The house had, had phenomenal bones, and we, we completely re redesigned the space, moved everything from the uh, the water lines, the drains, um, all of the, we put in new windows. When we moved in, the kitchen had a totally different layout. It was a long hallway basically from this door right here. So it was a, it was a much smaller space, much more kind of condensed Very space. cramped and it wasn't making the best use of the space. So we just, we really ripped it all the way down to the studs, took everything out, completely redid all of the electrical, all the plumbing, everything, and then just built it back up from there. We used a lot of vintage elements in the kitchen, like the reclaimed wood came from an 1800s barn in Connecticut. We actually used IKEA cabinetry for two parts of it, and then the other part is just kind of framed out of two by four. And then we just kind of covered it with the reclaimed wood um, to give it a more kind of rustic look. So I'm a really impractical person. I have visions for spaces and those visions are the priority. So I wanted open shelving with loads of plants on them because everyone needs plants to cook, right? <laughs> yeah, I used to have glassware, plates, everything on here and it just looked so cluttered. So slowly anything that was actually a functional part of a kitchen just started coming off of the open shelves until there were just plants. <laughs> I really have a weakness for vintage glassware, and these are my favorite glasses in the world. Um, I've only come across three of them in all of my years of thrifting, but they're peekaboo glasses. <laughs> this guy, I saw him online at an estate sale, and I saw that he was hidden just peeking through. I call him Ned now, but I found him, and he was this original acrylic portrait in really great shape, and. They charged me 10 bucks and now he's one of my favorite pieces in our home. The funny part is that on Halloween, Ned had got an eye patch. On Christmas, Ned had a Christmas hat. So Ned gets dressed up yeah. depending on the, on yeah. the holiday. He hangs with us, he parties, <laughs> he parties hard. <laughs> I was at an estate sale recently and it was the home of an artist who had passed away and all of his life's work was in the home, so there were hundreds of portraits. And I was shocked when I got to the sale and found that none of the dealers were there for the portraits. So I had the option of hundreds to choose from, and it was a little overwhelming. And I picked up 18 of them, thinking that that was a lot of portraits to bring home. And I thought, oh, I'll sell half of these, keep a couple. And then I added them to the wall, and then I realized that I didn't have enough. So now I'll be trying to find some more portraits to add. I really envision them covering almost every inch of the white wall. The library space is definitely my favorite and I love just escaping in there in the very small amount of free time that I get with having two young children and 
I love being surrounded by the books and the plants and I think it just has enough color to be very cheerful and happy and muted enough where you can feel relaxed in that space. So it's probably the room I'm most proud of designing. It just I kind of nailed exactly what I was going for, I think. I envisioned the shelves having the book collection that I've been collecting for four or five years now, but also being kind of a live plant wall. But there were some logistical issues, such as this half of the bookshelves not getting any natural light. So we found this product from Mod Sprout and their grow frames, there's a grow light inside so that I could bring the greenery onto this side of the shelves. I think my middle finger is my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> I found this at a estate sale that was all mid-century stuff and it was in his basement, like man cave bar, and I just spray painted it gold and it's my favorite, it's very welcoming. <laughs> Some of my plants are actually even thrifted. This enormous euphorbia cactus thing, I found at an estate sale, and they're super expensive when you get them from a nursery, but I got it for a hundred bucks, and I realized it was a hundred dollars because everyone else at that sale was like, how the hell would I get this huge thing home? <laughs> so we got it home by <laughs> putting the thing on the back of my dad's pickup truck and me essentially hugging it, going 40 miles an hour down the road. Really, I mean, I almost gave my life for this thing, right? <laughs> and then I find out about it when you when you roll up in the in the driveway and yeah, say, I need you truck. to come get a cactus out of the truck. <laughs> I'm like, all right. That's, nor that's normal for that's, us. That's it's normal totally normal for us. <laughs> totally normal. <laughs> She's just staring at me. She likes to eat everything. Yeah. Literally everything. She's eating couches and shoes and toys and <laughs> there have been a few things that i we've, i've had to like hide after the dog has eaten it because i'm like oh that's not good like something you've just what? brought home some type of vintage thing you brought home see those are the things that you just don't ever tell me <laughs> now i'm gonna be thinking what what did you eat ripley what did you eat <laughs> So we have no closets on our ground floor, so we need this space to be a highly functional space, yet play into the whole design. So straight on into the kitchen where you see my orange bar stools, picked up that same color and put it on the wall here so it would carry your eye into both spaces. Watch your head. So this is probably my longest running collection. They're all antique or vintage. Some people find this wall super creepy. They're like, oh, so you just have a bunch of dead people on your wall. A lot of them are really old, but I don't see it that way. I just love the character of all of the different silhouettes. And a lot of them have the writing on the back saying what year they were made and the person's name. and. I just love that sort of thing. You know, it's a great conversation piece, and everyone that walks in the house is always immediately drawn to this wall. Your dead people wall. Our dead people wall. I think we've been here for maybe a year at most, and I came home and Katie was ripping tiles off the wall in the bathroom, um, doing a, a very bad job and ripping up all the, the drywall underneath. <laughs> so, um, needless to say, I. I I had to take over after that, so that's how we got our first project started. Yeah, so I really wanted to have a vintage dresser in this space. From a DIY perspective, this is a perfect example of kind of implementing her vision. Obviously with the drawers, they, they go back and they take up the entire space, and we wanted to make sure that we could be able to put the sinks with the drains and all of the water supply in, but make the drawers still functional. So. That was, you know, we had to do basically surgery on these drawers and, you know, some of them have sections in the middle that we can't put anything, that we just built kind of squares in or, or cutouts so that they go around the pipes and they're still usable. I have so much fun with kids' spaces because you can just go wild with color and whimsy. This is our daughter Eva's room. She just turned seven. And this house bed is the only piece that came from our old house. She was two when we bought it and she still loves it just as much to this day. This Russian nesting doll collection, this is how I get her to come to estate sales with me by telling her, hey, we'll find some Russian nesting dolls. And this Art Deco fireplace I found in a really disgusting basement and it 
was a project to get it all cleaned up and painted. So we're in our younger daughter Josie's room. She is about two and a half years old. This bed is a perfect example of Kate just falling in love with something and needing to have it in the space because it is old enough that it's not a standard size. So we can't get a standard mattress. It's, what is it called, like three quarters? Yeah, it's like a that? three quarters mattress. You have to have them special made, but I found that an RV mattress actually fits on the bed. So she has an RV mattress. <laughs> Not the biggest fan of spaces that are just put together exactly right or pieces that don't have the little chip or patina. I think that just adds character and we try to give that sort of character to every space we create. Like this video. And subscribe to Handmade. For more home tours just like this. Bye. Bye. We're on Long Island, so it should be like, get out of here. <laughs> okay, really.